Hi, I'm Jasmine Figueroa. I'm your success mindset coach. And on this video, I want to talk to you about how do you know when it's time to leave your nine to five job and do this entrepreneurship thing full time? So many people have questions about this, and I'm excited to give you my answer and my solution that I think is really going to help you out. And we're going to talk about all of that inside of this video. But first, I want to take you back to when I left my corporate job working at a digital marketing agency to begin working for myself full time. So as I said, I was working at a digital marketing agency. I had kind of worked my my way up the ranks pretty high up there and I was doing really well. I had everything that I needed financially. Um, I had that stability. Um, I didn't have to worry about where my money was coming from, but what I did have was sort of a hole inside of me. I felt really out of alignment with what I really wanted in my life. I'm somebody who loves, loves, loves to serve people and to um, give my all to people and to help them to cultivate the, the power that they already have within themselves to change their lives in really, really profound ways. I wasn't getting to use that when I was working at that digital agency. And so I felt that something was off, you know, I felt like something was missing and I really went back and forth for quite a while trying to figure out, do I keep the cushy job or do I uh, kind of go off into the unknown and, and work for myself full time? Um, I had been dabbling a little bit in copywriting for a little while while I was at the digital marketing agency. So I kind of had my toe in the water of entrepreneurship and my plan was I wanted to step out and kind of do my own copywriting business, right? And kind of let that grow into a digital marketing business of my own. Um, so I would spend my time at work kind of fantasizing and, and looking into it and all of that stuff because I was too afraid to really take the leap and do it. I didn't know um, how it would all pan out. What ended up happening <laughs> is that um, there was this one day when I got really, really frustrated on the job and, you know, I had been kind of diving into what it would be like to work for myself and all of that stuff for a while. And that day, I literally quit my job at 12 p.m. noon, got up from my desk and I was like, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not fulfilled. I can't do this. I can't keep pretending that I'm where I'm supposed to be right now. Um... It was sort of like that light that was caged within me was finally breaking through the barriers and saying, it's my time. Like, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do what my heart is calling me to do. So I, in a spur of passion, I got up and I left and I didn't have a safety net. I didn't have savings. I didn't have any of that stuff. But the reason that I tell you this is because that's my story. And fortunately for me, I happen to be somebody who works really, really well under pressure. Not everybody does. And that brings me to my first point, which is how do you operate? You know better than anybody else how you operate and how you operate well. Like under what circumstances are you operating at like optimum efficiency, right? For me, for some reason, backing myself up into a wall where I have no choice but to succeed really gets my, my gears going in a great way and I just make it work. I mean, when I left the agency, I did. I ended up building a six-figure dig digital marketing business. I did it. Um, but I work well in those kinds of situations, you know, so it's really critical that you look at um, sort of your past experiences, what you know about yourself, even ask some friends and family uh, what they've noticed about the way that you handle things and specifically when you're kind of backed against a wall or when you, you kind of have support and you kind of have that safety net sort of thing going on. Um, ask them and figure out. Uh, in terms of what you've got going on now, financially, um, experience, all of that stuff, safety net wise, do you have a safety net and do you feel that you need it?
So take that into account. And that brings me into number two, which is look at the facts. I am somebody who is all about following intuition and passion, obviously, because I <laughs> left my freaking corporate job just like that because I was on a whim of passion. That's just me, I guess. But I do believe that it's really, really important that you take some time to look at the facts. And what I mean by that is look at where you are financially. Are you living paycheck to paycheck? Do you have savings? Um, are you already behind on your bills for this month? Things like that. Look at where you are financially and be honest with yourself. Do you think it is viable for you at this time? It doesn't mean ever. It doesn't mean not in the near future. But at this time, is it viable for you to quit your 9 to 5? And if not, what steps can you take to make it viable? So let's not just leave it with, oh, I'm screwed. I don't have a savings account, so I'm not going to do it. Or I didn't pay my power bill this month, so it's never going to happen. I'm never going to be an entrepreneur. That's baloney. Let's not get into that frame of thinking. What I'm asking you to do is just get into the facts. Just lay out like what is honestly there so that you have something to work with, right? So in terms of we've got financially, look at the facts. We've got experience-wise, look at the facts. Okay, if you're going into an industry and you've got some real experience in there, for instance, when I left my job at the digital marketing agency, I went from digital marketing to more digital marketing. So I kind of already had a lot of the knowledge that I needed in order to get that going, to get that started in that industry. I kind of knew where to look and all of that stuff, right? Um, but let's say that you've been working in finance and now you want to go into mm, selling paintings, right? Something like that. I don't know. Or coaching, whatever. Something very different than being in the finance industry. My question for you is, do you have the experience level to be able to say, okay, if I quit my job today or tomorrow and I went full-time into this industry, would I know what the heck I was doing? Again, let's not get into that frame of mind of like, oh no, I have no experience, nobody's gonna take me seriously, all of that self-sabotaging baloney that we get into. Don't get into that, just look at, do you have the experience level? You don't need all of the experience, you don't have to be an expert. That's not what I'm saying, but do you have enough experience to get started? Do you have enough experience to know what your first couple of steps are going to be or where you should look to find those steps, things like that, right? Do you have that? And if you don't have that, then get it. What do you need to do? Reach out to a mentor? Take a couple of courses or workshops? What do you need to do? Get that experience. Get yourself to a place where you have what you need. And then finally, and this is, I swear this is my soapbox, so I will try to make it quick and not rant about this, but finally is to look at the facts in terms of your current resources. I am always droning on about freaking resources because my thing is this. So frequently, we're looking to change something in our lives or we're looking to do anything in our lives, whatever it is. We want to start manifesting more. We want to quit our nine to five. We want to, whatever it is. But we don't look at the resources that we already have in our lives that can help us to get there. There's, I bet you $100 that there is at least one resource, if not many more, that can help you on this journey right? So let's say that you are going into the coaching business. Do you maybe have books on coaching, books on building business, books on marketing? Do you follow anybody on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube who talks about the subject that you would like more information on? Things like that. What are the resources that you already have? Do you know any coaches, right? Things like that. Do you have a coach? Things like that. What do you already have in your life that you can use to help you? 
take stock of that. And then gather more and keep taking stock of it. Like, don't lose sight of what you've got there to help you out. This is your little toolkit. So often we just kick our toolkit to the curb and we say, let's just do it willy-nilly. And we have all these tools that we could be using to make our lives so much easier, and we're just not. So take some time to do a resource list. Swear to God, you will thank me later, okay? Okay, number three is my favorite intuition listen feel get in good with your intuition the best way for me to explain this to you in a way that's really tangible because I know when we're talking about intuition and, and things that can be um, thought of as kind of woo-woo or whatever although I love woo-woo so whatever but you know what I'm saying? I really want to make this tangible for you so that you can utilize it to figure out if you're ready to quit your nine to five and when you are ready to quit your nine to five, right? So how do we know what our intuition is telling us? Well, one concrete way that I know works for me every single time without fail is to go by literally a feeling that I get in my gut. So let's say that I'm thinking about quitting my nine to five tomorrow. So I'm literally gonna go into my head, close my eyes, pretend like I'm in that experience of I just quit and I'm driving home from my job or whatever and I'm about to go start my business for myself or start doing this full time. What do you feel right here in that experience? Give yourself time to figure out what that feels like to you. Is it heavy or is it light? That's what I want you to look for. Is it heavy, like weight is on you, or is it light? Now, I want you to be careful with this because oftentimes fear is going to come into the picture. It's going to get you all messed up. This is not about the fear. Fear is a different topic, really, if you ask me, because intuition is an inner knowing, whereas fear could be coming from freaking anywhere, right? So you got to really address it in a different way. So be careful not to confuse your fears with intuition. So just feel in your gut, is it heavy in your body or does it feel light? And then I want you to think about, um, let's say that you decide you're not going to quit your 9 to 5 right now. You're going to continue to work there for a while and keep your side hustle or however you want to do it. Experience that for a moment and figure out how that feels, how that sits in inside of you. Is it heavy or is it light? Super simple. Okay, and then, ooh, I got a lot of points here for you guys. <laughs> and then number four is declutter. This is where we're really talking about fear. Because the bottom line is, if you've got fears, especially ones that you haven't clearly distinguished they're going to start guiding your life because fears is, is quite commonly a really strong prominent force in a lot of our lives unfortunately in our society today a lot of things are driven by fear a lot of people make money by instilling fear and it's become really really commonplace for us to run our lives on that fear oftentimes without even realizing it so the goal of this piece is to uncover what those fears could be and begin to declutter them. So what I want you to do is literally get a pen and paper or a Google document or however you want to do it and just write every single one of the fears that comes up for you, no matter how stupid, no matter how outlandish, no matter how small you think that it is. Whatever it is, just write it all out and keep writing and keep writing and keep writing because you just want to get as much out into the light as you can so that you can start dealing with that stuff, right? And ultimately, which is number five, time, I want you to give yourself time. This doesn't have to happen today. This doesn't have to happen tomorrow. Don't rush this. Give yourself time. Do all of the things that I just outlined for you. Actually take your time and look at what's going to be best for you right now. What's going to be most beneficial for you? What's going to really sit well with you in your heart and in your soul? 
because you know internally what's best for you and all of these things just help you to bring that to the forefront that's all that it that's all that it is okay so if you want to take this further if you want help uncovering and decluttering all of those fears that show up when we're trying to figure out if we should quit our nine to five or we're trying to figure out how to get unstuck in our business or any of those things that come up when we're really stepping into our own light and really stepping out as leaders and putting ourselves out there into the world. If you want help and guidance in that area, then I invite you to go to connectwithjasmine.com and apply for a complimentary discovery session so you and I can sit down and hash out what it would look like if we could begin creating your ideal success. Okay? Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.